everybody frustrates me because they are having a really hard time. For some reason, I, I'm not numb, but I'm not having any mental issues with it. But they get frustrated, they get angry, they want to have questions, they want to make suggestions, they, they want to tell me how, don't lose, listen, I'm not the guy to lose faith. I, actually, I don't have that faith. And that's the other argument. But you have to find it, even if at the end, listen, if that God that you guys believe in is waiting for me to kneel before him in the last 30 seconds, he's got another thing coming. Because that's not a God I ever want to serve. That's not a God, a God that will fuck with me until the last moment just to show me. Fuck him. Fortunately, I don't believe in God. So, But that's one of the biggest frustrations. Is people want me to grab on as they would. And I would hate to grab on if you're drowning, grab on to air when there's nothing there at the last minute. So that's one of the frustrations. People still, you know, making suggestions and all I want is just show up, be with me, talk to me. Let's get the jokes out of the way. Let's uh, learn from me how to die. I think I'm pretty good at dying. I think I'm, I'm trying, really, really trying hard to educate people on how to die. This, I wish I could have stayed longer to teach people how to die. People don't cope well with other people's death and their own. Learn how to die. That's the dignity right there. This here, what this is, I'm not going to open it because, well, let me see. It's a Back, back that contains, oh, this is another very eerie, annoying thing. It contains a battery operated little device that, in this case, I have a bag where I'm getting nutrients because I was worried that since I'm not eating, oh, uh, so they have a bag that they could give me nutrients from. It's like 24 hours, I got to keep it on. So I'm getting nutrients out of that. And then if I need an IV or something else, sorry, saline or uh, to administer the meds through IV, this is available. So I got to be carrying this. Sorry. And this comes all the way. And then it goes all the way in here. This is called a porta cath, cath, the catheter, obviously portable. And in this case, it has two lines. One still available here for something else. And this one that's feeding the nutrients. And you know, this could be taken off. I like to take a shower or do, well, when I don't need something. Could be also used for, now I don't have to be poked constantly would like get one IV, an IV site will last only three or four days tops. Or then IV site, but they don't use a method that I learned. And so then they got to go somewhere else and extract blood. So you could even get blood from here and everything. So this is what this is, this pack. So wherever I go, I got to take this with me. So now I'm all hooked up and connected and piped here and there. They put this in Monday, I think. I don't remember. But here's the thing, I don't know if you could hear the sound. It does this all night. I'm sitting there, I hear this thing breathing next to me. Hear that? I'm like, I'm the one who's dying here and I don't breathe like that. And this thing makes that eerie sound. You hear that? That's just creepy. I don't want to hear that next to me. It sounds like someone's dying. And I, even I'm dying and I'm not sounding like that. It's just nasty. I hate that. Uh, so this is, you know, this superstition of, that people have, especially like Spanish community. That when, you know, the so-and-so was dead and dying and they said this so whoever that's already dead and came to visit them. 
and then the next couple of days they die. So I never believed any of that. But the other night, I have finally gotten the medication just right. Maybe it was in a squeeze about three, three and a half hours of sleep out of it. And somehow my head didn't get right. I started making this sound that it wasn't, I wasn't really passing gas or burping, but it was a sound right here that uh, it's like, like not fluid, but maybe gas was being transferred from one side to another, but it wouldn't come out. And that kind of woke me up. But what I realized is I had this dream. I was going somewhere. And then I turn around and I see my dad. And there he was, and he had dark hair. And he was waiting, and he said, from around, from around the corner, the, the door. And he said, uh, calmly, he said, I'm here waiting to give you a ride. And he had a, when I was little, he had this black, I don't know, late 50s, early 60s Cadillac, you know, with a big uh, tail in the back like that, black. And he had it parked, and he, I always loved that car. And he said, I'm gonna give you a ride in that car. And I'm waiting. And I said, no, go ahead, I'm not going now. He said, okay. And he left. And then that fucked me up for the rest of the night. Because now I'm between not being able to breathe the medic in me kicks in. I start all of a sudden, uh, you know, realizing I'm having trouble breathing. Now it's anxious. So I decided to walk around on the hallway. Now it's 3.30 in the morning. The nurses don't mind. And I said, yeah, I'm a little anxious right away. Xanax? Do you want a Xanax? I give you Xanax or I got all that. How do you feel? I said, I've never taken that stuff. So never needed. I've never been anxious in my life. I've never been depressed. Now I'm going to take something else that's probably who knows what reaction I'll have to this thing. And I don't want that. So I'm going to have to tough it out. So I walked around, see if I tired myself. The other thing too is I never saw a recliner. Every hospital I go to, they have a recliner. Okay, hold on. You're getting away from the story. I'm getting into the story. Did you, did you think it was real? No, of course it wasn't real. It's just a dream. But... So that made me anxious. What made me more anxious was than not being able to breathe. So I go back to my bed. I said, I'm going to turn on the O2. So I put it on three. She, she said, whatever you want. I turned it on. And I still am thinking, I, this is how I'm going. I had the dream. And at some point, my throat's going to close. And I'm going to go. So I propped myself, kept the airway open, did the whole thing, nothing. So I walked around. Like I said, they don't have a recliner. I had to find one of the chairs out in the hallway that reclines and swivels and all that. <laughs> Reclined on that, they didn't mind because they could keep an eye on me. Put my feet up. Then those off, I went down a little for a while. And I was finally able to feel in that position some movement. So I said, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom. All I did was pass gas four times. But that pressure when it came out, it was almost as good as when they drained me. Just four, just perfect. And then I kind of, by the time I went back to sleep, it was like six. Uh, and then I try to sleep the rest of the day. Now the dream, don't, I still don't believe in that stuff, but the dream, what screwed me up was the fact that I was noticing a sort of a breathing uh, labored or difficulty. And I didn't care for that on top of the dream. So I'm like, I'm being, really, this is gonna happen in the morning? So no, I didn't die the next day or the day after. So far I'm here. So I guess dead people visiting me, that's not gonna take me away. But you know, everybody got creeped out when I told, I told the nurse, she goes, oh my God, I'm over. 
So now I knew I wasn't going to die. Father, get, people get creeped out. It's okay. <laughs>